Hello, and welcome to another mini lesson about propositional logic. Um, in the last uh, video, we introduced these um, rules of inference and described what they all mean. Um, and in this video, we're going to do some proofs using these rules. Um, uh, and I've written them up here so we don't have to have them all memorized while we go through this video. Okay, so the first one that we're going to prove is that we have to prove Q and R given um, P implies Q and R and P. Um, this seems fairly obvious, but actually requires a couple of different steps um, uh, to prove using our rules. Um, now, the first thing to notice, though, is that when we're proving things using inference, usually it will say prove Q and R. Um, and what that means is that Q is true and R is true. Um, this just means that if um, this comes from... Uh, so, some ways that people view models are either you're in the model, in which case you're true, or you're outside of the model, in which case you're false, right? Um, and so this comes from this way of viewing a model, but usually if you just see something listed like this, assume that means truth, right? So in our prove that in our model Q is true and R is true given that in our model p is true and in our model the statement p if p then q and r is also true right so that's what this statement means here okay so our first two steps are to put down what we are given so these are our two pieces of given information and now we're going to start um, doing more things with that so our first step um, since this is a simple implication, is to look up to modus ponens. We are given that the left side is true, so we know that the right side is true. So we can conclude Q and R is true by modus ponens. Our next step um, is going to be to conclude um, we want to be able to conclude that Q is true and R is true separately. Um, and luckily enough, we have this lovely little simplification rule that says that if the and is true, then each one of those is true. So we have to do this twice. So the first one, we conclude Q based on simplification. And the second one, we're going to conclude that R is true based on simplification. So sometimes these proofs can look a little bit confusing because it's a little unclear, you know, what what lines are going into each each inference. So for example, we are taking these two lines and putting them together for this one. And then for this one, we just take this line and use it for simplification. And for this one, we're taking this line and using it for simplification, right? So it can get a little bit confusing to read. Um, and you may run into that problem when you're reading proofs given in the book. Um, but just know that you can sort of hop a line along between different lines in a way that you can't with our, our simplifications using logic laws that we were we were doing before. Um, uh, but you still have to have something above that you're using to conclude something below. It just doesn't, it's not always just the line right above it. Um, and so this can be hard to keep yourself organized um, as you're doing these proofs. But here we have concluded that Q is true and R is true, which was our goal. And so we are done with that proof. It's not a very long proof, but it gives you an idea of how this works. All right, we're going to do one more on this video, and then we'll start mixing our logic laws with, with the rules of inference in the next video. So in, in this one, we are being asked to conclude that T is true in our model, right? So prove T is true, right? So when somebody says prove T is true, right, is what you want to think in your head, right? I'm going to erase that just because it's confusing, but that's what you want to think in your head. Given that P and Q is true, P or S or um, P or S implies not R is true and R or T is true. So this is this is a little bit less um, transparently obvious than this, but it's actually fairly easy to prove given these givens. All right. So our first step, which is step number four, right? So our first step is to write out our givens and then we want to um, start moving toward statements about T. So we're going to start with this one. Um, and we have a lovely rule that says if we know that 
P and Q is true, then we know that, or yeah, if we know that P and Q is true, then we know that P is true. So we're just going to do that, and we're going to say P is true um, using our simplification. Now we can add some stuff to that P. We can add anything we want to that P using our addition rule, right? So if we know that P is true, we know that P or Q is true. So in this case, we can say, ooh, we want to get that to be true, right? That's P or S. So let's say P or S, right? This is addition. We're using our addition rule. And now that we know that P or S is true, and we know that this, is, this sentence is true as well, we can go up to our modus ponens again, right? So we know that P is true, and we know that P um, implies Q, then we know that Q is true. So we can say by modus ponens that not R is true. All right, so what can we do once we know that not R is true? Well, we have another statement about R, right? So R, R or T is true. Um, and as it turns out, our disjunctive syllogism works very well here, right? So we can say um, uh, R or T is true and not R, so we can conclude T, which is our goal. So T is true given a disjunctive syllogism and QED, we've done it again. All right, um, so these were two sets of proofs that basically only used... Um, uh, our rules of inference, um, although this technically required a little bit of commutative property that I glossed over. Um, but this is how you do a proof just with rules of inference, not bringing in our logic laws either. Um, in the next video, we'll show some mixing of uh, rules of inference with logic laws.